Hi, I'm Bryce. I run ultra marathons, so you don't have to. And this is the story of my very first 100 mile race and also my very worst 100 mile race. For those of you who don't know, 100 mile races are a little different than your morning 5K. Uh, a 5K you can finish before sunrise. Uh, these races, you'll see a sunrise, a sunset, and if you're lucky, a second sunrise, which is kind of like Hobbit's second breakfast, but for ultra marathon runners. So the race I'm talking about is the Angelus Crest 100 mile race. Uh, spoiler alert that it's a solo finisher. So I actually did finish the race. I didn't drop out at mile 50. Although I wanted to, I was regretting some of my life decisions. Uh, let me explain to you how these 100 mile races work and the kind of things that happen along the way, including projectile vomiting, bears, uh, you name it. So start early morning before sunrise, you and a bunch of crazy people get together at the start line gathering around in the dark, knowing that a good solid 30-ish hours of pain awaits you on the other end. And we just started in the city of Wrightwood, California. Very cute mountain town, by the way, if you ever go visit. Uh, it's only up about 5,000 people and actually recently survived the line fires, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm glad it's still there and hopefully uh, we can do another Angeles Crest 100. So as you can imagine, for 100 miles, you want to start slow. Low and slow, not uh, hot and fast, as they say. Um, this is like uh, smoking a brisket, for instance. You want to just... You don't want to burn yourself out too early. Uh, especially, this is a doozy. You start with a 2,000-foot climb straight up a mountain. It's wonderful. Uh, it's dark. You have a headlamp. You're looking around, making sure you don't trip over tree roots, um, which I did not do in the dark. Uh, however, um, after the sun rose... And I ran a while, and I was like 13 miles in the race. Um, I did eat shit. I tripped over a rock on the exact stretch of trail that I had actually volunteered and leveled for eight hours. I spent eight hours leveling a trail, and I still fell on a rock. Doofy me. I just went, Pfft. and uh, so that was step number one, uh, or misstep number one, was falling at mile 13. And then I was enjoying the rest of the day. Um, started getting hotter and hotter as the sun rose. So at nighttime, it's cold and chilly in the mountains. But as you're running, the sun rises. And you know what happens when that happens? It gets hot. So hot that uh, you start sweating like a mother. And what you actually do is you just dump ice in hats. You put an ice hat on. You put ice in these sleeves that you wear. And you're just running like frosty to the snowman trying to make it to the next aid station before you melt. But surviving the day was uh, pretty easy. I had enough ice to get me through it. And around mile 50 was when things started going, mm. um, I'm climbing up this mountain and every few hundred feet I've just got to stop because I'm like very dehydrated, running out of calories and I just can't wait to get, the aid, get to the aid station before you actually turn around and start the second half of the race. Um, I finally make it up there. I've got sunscreen. I've got dried salt. I've got dead skin. I've got dirt. I've got sweat. You name it. Everything is all in my face. I look like a horror show. But I fit in because once you get there, it actually looks like a scene of mash. You've got people just sprawled out on these chairs. It's like, what am I doing with my life? You've got people performing open toe surgery on their toes as they're trying to like drain bloody blisters and all sorts of stuff. But I knew that I had to go refuel myself. Um, and you know the saying, eat colorful foods. Uh, so I had some peanut butter and jelly and a Pedialyte popsicle stick. And I thought, hey, that's great. I just need some quick calories. PB&J, what can go wrong? Pedialyte, that's what you have when you're sick, right? Um, and like, okay, I've got all this food in me. I'm going to start feeling better, right? And I go down to sit on a chair. Back when I actually could sit on chairs before my legs got so stiff that I couldn't actually sit down. So I go in and sit on a chair and the invasion of sugar that I had in my stomach combined with just the hunching meant whoosh, I just, this rainbow shot out of me over the side of the mountain twice. And I was freaking out because, I mean, if you throw up once, it's like fine, but I still had 50 miles to run, which means I needed to burn hundreds and hundreds and thousands of calories. And if I'm not eating, uh, I'm not going to be able to fuel myself for the second half of the run. So I was just sitting there watching the sunset on the top of the mountain thinking, is this the sunset of my race? Uh, do I have to go tell people that Eek, I, I didn't do it? 
I made it 50 miles and uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. I didn't want my journey to end there. So I, I sat and I contemplated for a few minutes and I thought maybe I'll just try some other food. Um, and comfort food, like a cheeseburger. I, I ordered a cheeseburger and then I found out the miracle food, which is chicken noodle soup. Uh, this thing, like within 20 minutes of downing the chicken noodle soup, I felt like a new human. Uh, I had been running for 13, 14 hours, the sun was setting, um, and I took a half hour at that aid station and just really mentally rallied and figured, all right, time to run through the night. You can do this. Uh, and yeah, I just took off back down the mountain and uh, I was able to climb another mountain as the sun was actually setting. Uh, so I got to turn around and enjoy a beautiful sunset and I felt a little bit better. Uh, I knew now I had the entire night ahead of me. Uh, so I put my headlamp on again and I'm running through these trails. Uh, and at this point, um, I'm drinking coffee at aid stations to try to keep me going. Uh, and actually Coca-Cola, uh, not sponsored by Coke. I love Coca-Cola, however. And uh, it's actually the second miracle of ultra running is drinking Coca-Cola, which uh, you probably want to drink at the same elevation, because what I found out is I actually poured Coca-Cola into some of my water bladders. And as I'm climbing up the mountain, you climb so much that the air density decreases so much that your bladders just start to balloon like this. And you've got to constantly chug the Coke or finish drinking the soda before it actually just like explodes if you're climbing up a mountain. Uh, but luckily, no soda exploded on me. Uh, however, uh, another runner that was running by me noticed some bear tracks. So at about, you know, 2 a.m., we're climbing up a mountain called Mount Baden-Powell, and people just start going whoop, 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 whoop. And apparently whooping is what you do just to scare away bears. Uh, that's something I learned. So whoop, whoop, whoop. So there I am running, chugging my soda, drinking my chicken noodle soup, whooping the bears away, apparently. Um, no bear got me, so I can say it 100% works. Uh, and then we got to this wonderful sign that says, don't worry, it's all downhill from here. It was at the top of the mountain that I was climbing. And I thought, oh, that's really funny. Uh, if only my legs worked at this point. You know how you work out really hard one day, and then the next day you're sore? Well, just imagine you're like running up and down mountains for 24 hours, and now you're still running but you're sore from the previous day. Uh, so sore that like you can't walk downstairs. Like if you've ever done like squats or something and you try to go downstairs, it's like, no, my one weakness. Kind of like Claptrap in Borderlands 2, if you remember that scene. My one weakness, stairs. Uh, yeah, I couldn't run downhill anymore. And at the aid stations, I couldn't sit in the chairs because I couldn't pick myself back up. I just like kind of fall into chairs like that. Um, it was pretty pretty brutal so what normally would have been a glorious time you're coming in on the last like 20 miles of the race you get to see glorious second sunrise uh i was a very very grumpy man because i couldn't actually go downhill the only thing i could really do is like power walk like malcolm in the middle you know when hal does that he gets into power walking i felt like hal just power walking on the flats waddling down the hills and then just like power hiking up the hills. I was di dying. But somehow by about noon the next day after witnessing a sunrise, falling, projectile vomiting, bears, a sunset, everything, uh, I finally finished. I completed my 100 mile race and I got a belt buckle. Yeah, that's what you get apparently when you finish 100 mile races, it's belt buckles. There's a story behind it. There used to be this horse race uh, where a guy didn't end up having a horse, so he ended up running 100 miles just running it instead of being on a horse, and uh, I guess he got a belt buckle at the end because, you know, cowboys. So yeah, that's my story. My first 100 mile race, I threw up, uh, but thanks to the power of chicken noodle soup, I'm still here to tell the tale. Uh, and if you enjoyed my ramblings about my 100 mile race, you can go watch another video I have about just how I've stayed in shape for the past 10 plus years, uh, being an underwear model on TV, 
well, did I mention that? And uh, running 100 mile races. So, ciao.